I'm going to take my glasses off because Lori says there's too much glare on there. My wife, Lori, says that. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to our conversations on songwriting. I'm Dave Shipper, and today we have Amy and Brad. I don't know if I know your last names. Uh, McGinnis? McIsaac. Okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Winnie Brave. <laughs> How did you two come up with a name like that? Um, when we first got serious about uh, becoming a band uh, as a two-piece and going on the road, we used to travel in a 1976 Winnebago. Uh, it looked like a refrigerator going down the highway. Sure. And so we kind of named ourselves after that. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, the, I think Sophia Talvik was, they, they traveled the country in a little Winnebago, they call Chief or something. It's a Chief model or something like that. And they yep. put a lot of miles on that thing. So how are you two doing during the pandemic? Um, not too bad. It's been, I mean, we've never been home for three months at one time. So at first, I think it was a little weird to get used to the fact that we weren't gonna go anywhere and play music, but we settled into some lovely downtime that maybe we needed more than we thought. Yeah. So well, I don't know, I've been gardening a lot. <laughs> catching, up on, catching up on projects, getting the, the yard work looked after, and uh, we travel in a van now, uh, a Mercedes Sprinter. So we've been putting a lot of effort into making that our home away from home, you know, renovating it to have a, a kitchen and a, and a bedroom slash lounging area and a full shower bath type thing. So uh, just picking away at stuff. So where is home actually? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are in Alberta, um, which, uh, okay. And we're central Alberta, so we're an hour outside of Edmonton in the east. So we're, mm -hmm. we're in the prairies. Uh, I think we're about I think 600 miles north of Bozeman. If oh. we, if we know our maps correctly, but mm -hmm. yeah. A lot, lot of uh, outdoor country there, right? Beautiful. Um, can you see the mountains from there, I would assume? No, not here. <laughs> not, <laughs> we not are flat. flat. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So let's see, would that be close to Corner Gas? Probably not, right? Um, we're not, well, I mean, we're probably about six hours. We accidentally drove through that town one time, heading really? down the border through Saskatchewan. So we found it by mistake. <laughs> yeah, that was always one of my favorites. So, um, well, tell me about, let, let's start talking about songwriting. So we picked a, Holden Hotel as the song, but you had Greasy Breakfast in there too, because we also love Greasy Breakfast. Um, what a great location for a song. You know, I noticed on your YouTube site, you have another song posted from there, um, just on vacation, just on tour. How did you come across that place? The Adobe. Yeah, so we hit the road every winter for about three months. Mm -hmm. And we were playing in Texas at um, the Pine View Grove store. Mm -hmm. um, and the owner there was really great. He put us up for two nights and we had, we had a ball. Uh -huh. And he asked if we were going down to Trilinga. And we had never been. We told him we, we had no plans going down there just yet. And he yeah. said, uh, well, if you, if you decide to go down, I have a place you can, you can stay at. So he ended up getting us a gig at the Starlight Cafe, which was amazing. Wow. And we went down a, a day early and, and found this little adobe on the side of a mountain. And it was, I think we had to drive about three miles an hour for about, oh my gosh, almost 20 miles. It took us almost an hour and a half from the main road of town to get all the way out into the sticks. But it was incredible. Once you got out there and there was no noise, there was, oh, it was just, oh. it was something else. But so that's somebody's place that they rent? Um, they don't rent it. We it happens to be there. We spoke to him at length about it yep. uh, during the two nights that we performed there. And he described it as uh, just basically a place where he could go when he's visiting friends in Trilingua and 
Oh. I get the impression maybe he built it or he knew the person who built it. He built it, yeah. Uh, but you can't find it on Google Maps. And the hand-drawn map that he gave us was not to scale, we'll call it. <laughs> and so about almost an hour north of Terlingua, we finally came across somebody on this gravel path who was coming from the other direction. So we said, we're looking for this particular adobe. Do you know it? And are we on the right way? And he said, yeah, you're doing fine. You just have to find uh, Mother Mary in a bucket. And that's your- Virgin in a bucket. <laughs> Vir Virgin Mary in a bucket. That's your left-hand turn. And the adobe will be next on the left. So uh, it was another 10 minutes or so from there. But uh, just Usually. unbelievable. Usually our Virgin Marys are in bathtub shrines around here. Yeah, this is one of those, it was like the stone shoulder statue and it was sitting in like a pail just at the side of the dirt road and we're like, there's the Virgin in a bucket. <laughs> so the, the hotel song was just one that you wanted to, uh, to record there. It didn't have any inspiration from the place. Yeah, we, we just thought it was such a cool setting so we thought well we'll see what we can get and we we were playing around with a camera we had just bought and mm -hmm. it was more of a project just to see if we could do it and how it was going to sound so it was all in the camera and we got home and we loaded it on the computer and we, you know tried our hand at some editing we're like well there we go we did it <laughs> it was wonderful uh what's it what's the story behind that song it's an old song that I had written a long time ago and completely forgot about it. I think I found it on an old voice memo. It wasn't complete, but it was there. And I, I can't even tell you how old it was. So I started listening to it and reworking it a little bit more and threw in some local flavor for, for the town we're in. And I think it's just, it's, it's the struggle with living in a small town and wanting to escape. You know, I remember when I was younger and living in, we're from Ontario originally. The town we lived in wasn't massive, but it wasn't tiny either. And, and all my friends and myself, there was always this urge to like go somewhere else, somewhere bigger, somewhere more exciting. But in the end, it was like, you know, you kind of grow out of that and, and you're good where you are. You know, there's something about being in a small town. I, I mean, I love living here in Holden. There's like maybe 300 people. And when we're on the road and all the busyness, Coming back here is, is just such a nice break from everything. <laughs> so officially, you live in Holden then? Downtown Holden. <laughs> Downtown, huh? And it's 300 people? Yeah, ish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it's it. uh, where we live. This is predominantly an agriculture type of county. So Sure. lots of farms and from the time that the rail line was first built yeah. this would have been a town i mean the rail line is you'll hear it when the train goes by it's <laughs> it's a quarter mile away from our back door uh this was a bustling hub for for product and for for commerce we had tractor dealers and car dealers and several restaurants and banks and gas stations and it was the place where the, the farmers, you know, in a, sort of a half an hour radius would all descend on hold, particularly on Sunday afternoons for market and socialization. Sure. But by the time the 1980s came, not only had other larger towns in the area began to sort of take hold and, and they ended up with the Walmarts and the businesses like that, Holden just slowly started to fizzle and die so we're down now to one bank that's open part-time we have an insurance company that has an office here in town we have the post office and a hotel. the holden hotel is still here uh although it's extremely uh misrepresenting <laughs> its past now it's basically a, a takeaway liquor store and a, a sit-down restaurant but not nearly the hustle and the bustle that it used to be. Okay, well, that makes more sense now. So obviously you are Canadian, you know, so uh, uh, 
you ended up, you're ending up the third different finalists that I'm interviewing outside of the United States. Uh, you know, a guy from Spain, um, Sophia's in Germany, and now you're in Canada. That's awesome. Have you ever come down um, to this part of the country uh, besides Texas? Have you been in Wisconsin and Midwest? We, uh, we tour out to Ontario every, um, usually end of summer and fall. We have driven through Wisconsin, Minnesota, it's all up that way. We, we've been through a lot of the states. We haven't played so much out that way. We typically play uh, like Texas, New Mexico, Arizona. We do a lot in Montana. So we have driven through. We just okay. never really played anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the where you live shows up in a lot of your songwriting besides the Holden Hotel? Not so much. I feel like most of our our inspiration comes from places we go to while we're on the road and people we meet. Sure. So I feel like just lately, it seems we've been writing a little bit more about home, probably because we're here a mm -hmm. lot now. Um, but yeah, a lot of our stuff is is transitory. It's all kind of all over. Now, what I've read in your uh, bio, I'm going to suspect, Amy, that you're you take the most. Uh, work doing the songwriting from a word standpoint or is it a is it a shared yeah. at least when we first started out um i i did all the writing that was what i did even before i met brad i was a single songwriter um our last record cheap gin album was a little more uh you know it was a, a co-effort um, so we're we're working that out, but I feel like Brad's really good at coming up with some licks and some grooves, like especially on the bass, and then we kind of figure out things to go with that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll see how it, how it goes. You know, writing, sharing, project. Mm -hmm. uh, so is your songwriting something that you work on daily, or is it inspirational? You know, I I I've gone through the effort of doing both. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious where you've been in your journey. Yeah, it's, it's, for me, it's, I wish I worked on it every day. And I feel like if I do something and I get something written, I'm a little more, I'm more apt to, to keep going on it each and every day I'm working on it. But for the truth be told, up until probably about two weeks ago, I hadn't written anything in well over a year. It's kind of one of those things that when it strikes, go but i am yeah, trying to sit there with a pen and paper and be like i'm gonna write a song today it's just no it doesn't work for me like that well the the people i uh, the songwriting class i took once so uh, they said write something every day you know even if it's nothing if it's garbage just write you know because your no. your head works differently so i was just kind of curious since that's what i was told to do and i'm not doing it how many how many other people aren't doing that too <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, so actually, if you do win in the next final rounds, um, we're going to ask you to resubmit or pick another video that, uh, you, you'd want the judges to look at. And ultimately the winner gets a booking at the Great River Folk Fest at the La Crosse, Wisconsin. So have you ever been to the God's Country, La Crosse, La, La Crosse Wisconsin? Uh, we drove. Where is Lacrosse on the map? Like it would, it would be two hours south of Minneapolis, St. Paul, right okay. in Mississippi. We were really close. Uh, Last fall, or yeah. don't mind me. I'm just gonna bring up the map here because I'm, I'm weird that way. But we, yeah, we. I think we because. We did the outskirts of Minneapolis last year when we were coming across yeah. heading to South Dakota. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we travel along that, that route. But it's a beautiful yeah. Mississippi Mississippi drive along along that way from uh, the Twin Cities down to us. So we we would have missed you on the south and the north. We would have come in uh, around Madison, and then we did actually go through. Is it, Wosu, Woso, and then uh, Eau Claire. Yeah, we did Eau Claire. And yeah. then south of Minneapolis. So we we went under and over. 
Yep. Okay. Gotcha. What's a beautiful what is that river you guys are on there? What? What's the river there? That's the Mississippi Lake. River. Oh, it is. Yep. It's pretty down that way. When we did that drive last year, I just remember, it, I think we drove through, it was just before sunset, and it was so pretty yeah. going across there. Yeah, gorgeous. Now, I, I would classify you guys more on the countryside or the kind of the rural folk kind of, uh, would that be a good kind of a classification for you? Yeah, I think so. I like rural folk. I've never heard that before. <laughs> I like that. Well, you know, they, uh, I remember uh, Norman Blake uh, would say that he's not really country, but he's kind of like rural country. You know? uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've, uh, we've had a new, developed a new love interest with outlaw country mm -hmm. and you know, Waylon Jennings and Merle Haggard and, and even uh, John Prine, of course. So we're, these days, it's a lot more of like, you know the one four five and make sure the chorus is big and and you know that's that type of if it's in the middle between folk and country it's that americana the overlaying americana sound i noticed in your videos too you uh, had a nice little stage for about three or four of them was that at home where you decided let's yeah. do a video <laughs> get some get some media content <laughs> Yeah, that's we. The first thing we did when we got home and realized we weren't leaving for a while, we uh, yeah. renovated one of the rooms in our unfinished basement, and that has become our rehearsal space and the video space. Great cave. Great cave yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you you two seem like a lot of fun. I would love to have you win to get out here. Uh, do you have any questions for me? No, I don't think okay. so. Sure. We driving you crazy? Are we driving you crazy with the songwriting contest stretching it out so long? <laughs> no, I actually I really like it, and I it was funny I forgotten yesterday was Sunday because it really doesn't matter what day it is anymore. Oh. And I had uh, you know, I think we were just getting ready to put some steaks on the grill, and so I went and clicked on the phone. And I saw the premiere come up, and I was like, "Oh, right, Sunday. Let's see." And then our name came up, and I was like, "Ah!" <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah, that's what I'd always hope, you know, that you, somebody who's watching is actually going to win. So, but, you, you know, it's been a journey. We, we've had this songwriting contest for uh, 13, 14 years of our 45 years existence. And when the pandemic hit, we said, what can we do to give back and what can we do to be active online? And it kind of, we kind of came up with this. So I've been I've been enjoying it. It's been a lot of time watching videos. Uh, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's about four or five of us in, in, <laughs> in the YouTube playlist. There's over a hundred now that we've watched. That's amazing. Yeah. And uh, with, a, with the radio show and I've just loved music, I collect the stuff and get it back on online. And I think I did find you guys in Bandcamp and found some of your music there. Mm -hmm. I'll probably go feast on some more later too. <laughs> we're we're just now, I think, finding, uh, developing the skill set to be able to record at home and to post more. Oh. It's been a goal of ours uh, over the last year or so mm -hmm. to uh, get that skill developed. We're going to make our next record here at home with the equipment that we just recently acquired, uh, like straight up bare bones. You know what I mean, like couple of crappy microphones and a mixer and, and <laughs> pro tools or anyway, logic I think we have. So yeah, you're on the side, yep. moving in the technological direction. So some new videos and some some new recordings to come. Once we figure out how it all turns on. All from the little city of Holden, three hundred people strong. <laughs> the yeah. village. Yeah, the village. <laughs> We have this huge studio there. Everybody will so, sought after to drive. How, what's your nearest big city? So for groceries and stuff, about a half hour away in the town of Beggarville. But oh. if we want like Ikea, we go to Edmonton, which is an hour. So that's not too bad. Well, that's, pretty, that's a decent drive. Okay. Well, that's about all I had for you today. So thank you very much for um, uh, taking time out of your day to come come talk to us. Um, 
and I wish you the best of success. Thanks, Thank Dave. you very much. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later.